Hey guys, Matt from EO. Welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesday. Today we are going to discuss the diesel heating systems on the that's available as an option with the X1 or standard on the X3. Uh, this will probably end up being two episodes, and so in this first one we're going to cover, you know, how the system works, what it actually is, uh, what it does and doesn't do. And then we'll get further in depth into troubleshooting and service recommendations and, and stuff like that probably in a, in a second episode, just to keep them short. Um, if you're getting value out of this content, then please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notifications as we upload more videos. If you've got feedback uh, or requests for other information or other videos, leave us a comment, let us know what you're looking for and we will uh, add it to our list of, of topics to cover. So thanks for tuning in and uh, hope you find some good info in this. All right, so first things first, we really wanna get into you know just a basic summary of what the diesel heating system is on the trailers and you know kind of how it works. And we're not gonna get super technical um, you know, and get down into the weeds or the nitty gritty. We're just gonna kind of keep it basic, just basic knowledge. Um, the diesel heating systems, are, of course, are an option on the X1 and X1H. Uh, they're not available on the X1N, and then they are a standard feature on the X3. So uh, one of the really common questions that we get a lot, you know, from, from interested parties is, you know, is it a, a diesel engine? You know, how much noise does it make? Uh, stuff like that. So. It's not actually a, a diesel engine. It is a heat exchanger, basically, that is fired by a diesel burner. So it uses diesel fuel to uh, create a flame inside a, a little burn chamber. And that actually heats uh, antifreeze or glycol. And then water passes through a heat exchanger inside that system. And that's where our hot water comes from. So it's, its real primary job is to heat water and then you have a subsidiary function of uh, it also generating enough heat that allows us to, to have a little bit of heat ducted into the tent. And so that's kind of a, a real basic summary of how it actually works. It doesn't make the tent into a sauna, you know. Um, it, does a pretty good job of taking the chill out of the air and there's some little tricks and, and techniques you can use to kind of boost uh, the performance of it. But um, the, uh, the main function again is for heating hot water. Now the, the appeal or the draw to the diesel heater is that it's one button, you hit the button and you've got your hot water coming up. And then the other appeal, so you get major convenience the other appeal is that it is super efficient. So you can expect um, the onboard diesel tank to last usually a week to a week and a half, maybe even longer if you're using it, you know, normal running it all night long or, um, you know, and then normal camp usage during the day. So that's one of the other great things about it. You don't have to worry about carrying um, really extra fuel unless you're going to be out for a really long time. So the next aspect that we want to discuss on the Webasto is um, actually which model you have, because that's another question that comes up more from a uh, service interval and service recommendation. So if you have a basically 2019 and back uh, to 2017 uh, X1, you would have a Thermotop Z and then if you have a 2020 model, you will have uh, 2020 and, and ongoing, will have a Thermotop Evo. And what that refers to is actually the heater module itself that is, uh, you know, the Webasto assembly. And one thing that, that I think it's important to point out in that regard is that the while the system seems really intimidating and there's a lot going on in a real small area, the uh, actual Webasto heat unit is only five parts. Uh, in that whole system, there's only five parts that actually do the heating. And so if you do have a problem with your Webasto, uh, it's usually not something major. Um, and it's usually something that's, that's fairly easy to source and replace, depending on the issue. Um, the other thing, 
that is very important to point out is it is not uh, some super exotic um, technology that's only manufactured in Australia and, you know, uh, unobtainium, basically. So Webasto is a massive uh, corporation and they have uh, kind of their fingers in every pot. They manufacture for the RV industry. Uh, they're huge in trucking, um, marine applications and so forth. So while you may have never needed to look for one, chances are that you've got a Webasto dealer or a technician that is familiar with Webastos somewhere within a really close proximity to you. Um, because again, they are in a lot of, of different applications. Um, and so we've found, you know, owners who needed to get service done or stuff like that, that ended up going to a semi truck repair shop because the technicians there are familiar with the Webastos because they're used to heat the cabs of semi trucks. Um, so there are, and we'll put some kind of recommendations in, in the video for, um, where to go if you need service and you're not close to us um, and uh, you know there's some additional resources and the other side of that is if you do have a problem or you have a question or you're looking for a recommendation on where to take yours for service uh, Webasto US's technical support is absolutely phenomenal so they are available by phone and email and they are extremely knowledgeable of their product and very very easy to uh, to work with so We've got plenty of resources for that and we wanted to just kind of take some of the intimidation out of it because it's actually a lot more common uh, than you might think when you're first getting into all of this. So covering that, um, back into the basics of how it works. In this lower unit, you have uh, the actual diesel burner the, and then the glycol tank and all of your water heating is done in this lower unit and thus you have your plumbing for the shower and the kitchen sink and all of that. The antifreeze inside is just a 50-50 mix. So that's 50% um, ionized water and 50% glycol. It's your standard off the shelf green 50-50 antifreeze. Uh, Webasto's recommendation for that is the Peak brand, P-E-A-K and uh, if you find that you are low on coolant or something like that, that's what you'd want to refill with. You wouldn't want to put pure water or any other type or color more specifically of antifreeze. So you'll want to stick with a green 50-50 mix. Um, you have a standard uh, automotive pressure cap on the top of the unit and underneath that is where your glycol is. And then inside that tank, there are basically coils like a radiator, um, and that is where the water passes through to, um, to get heated. So there's no actual, with the exception of the plumbing, there's no actual water in this unit. It's full of, uh, of antifreeze, and um, that's what actually gets heated. That's the medium that is heated by the diesel. Up top here is the second portion of the Webasto and it has plumbing lines. You'll see, if you're looking at yours, you would see two large rubber hoses that run up the side of the, uh, the outer wall there. And they go into here, which is another um, heat exchanger, basically, or heater core with an electric fan that pushes through it. And that's where our tent heat comes from. So uh, if you, have, you know, have a question or you're having an issue with your fan or your switch or something like that, all of that lives up in here. So tent heating up top and water heating down below. All right, so one of the most common uh, questions that we get and or um, usage issues, uh, for lack of a better way to term it, is the operation of the Webasto unit at high altitude. And so from the factory, the, the Webastos are basically calibrated for operation at around two to 4,000 feet of altitude. Uh, if you're below that, no worries, it will operate just fine. Um, if you're above that, it will still operate, but what you will find is that over a course of time, and it, 
depends entirely on um, how often it's used and how it's used. Uh, if you're at higher altitudes, which a lot of us, you know, love to go to Colorado and some of those places where we're up eight, 9,000 feet, uh, you will build up um, carbon on the burner of the Wabasto. And that's a natural, you know, thing uh, to happen, basically. It would be the same uh, as driving an older, you know, carbureted vehicle at altitude. Uh, you have a, a setting and you all of a sudden changed your oxygen intake and thus you're either burning more fuel or less fuel and not burning it as efficiently. And so that builds up carbon and that carbon needs to be cleaned out. So there, are, uh, there is a way to have the unit, um, it's often referred to as calibrated, but it's actually more of an adjustment. Uh, you cannot adjust the fuel mixture um, on this unit. But what you can have done, either via a, a Wabasto authorized dealer, or you can actually, if you're, if you're comfortable or feeling up to it, you can actually source the uh, communication cable and the software online and uh, be able to actually calibrate and service your unit yourself. Because it is all, just like anything else these days, is all computerized. Um, the, there is a thread on our Facebook owners group, and if you're not a member of that, uh, this is a good time to insert a plug. Go to Facebook and request to join the Patriot Campers USA owners group. And there's a great thread on there uh, in reference to one of our owners who did buy the software and was able to do some adjustments themselves. But what that adjustment does is actually increases the fan speed of the internal fan that pushes air into the burn chamber or combustion chamber. So we're pushing more air, which in turn makes the fire hotter and therefore it burns more fuel and, and burns off some of that carbon. Um, it's not a, a foolproof method. It's not a guaranteed method. There's still some other uh, maintenance and, and proper operation that has to be done, but uh, it is a way to compensate for frequent high altitude use. Um, if it's something that you want to have done, I would recommend personally going to a Webasto dealer um, and having them do that for you because they're, uh, you need to, to do it properly, you need to measure the CO2 uh, output through the exhaust and that gives you your, your actual setting. And that's something that a, a Wabasto service center or a Wabasto dealer would be able to do that you may not want to spend the money to, to purchase that equipment. Anyway, um, so altitude. Now, backtracking a little bit from altitude, the general operation of the, the diesel heating system, it's not designed to run for 30 minutes and then be shut off. Uh, so it is designed to, and realistically, it needs to run for an hour and a half, two hours at a time. Uh, and again, that helps to prevent a buildup of carbon. So turn it on, let it run, let it heat up, do your cooking or your washing or, or your showering or heat the tent um, and set a timer for it to turn off in two hours if you're going to leave camp. Um, or if you're there managing it, just turn it off. Um, but let it run for a good amount of time. And if you can, leave the heat switch on, the fan inside the tent, because that puts a little bit of a load on the system and makes it actually work. Um, so really important is, you know, letting it run for a good amount of time, hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Um, that is, uh, that recommendation comes direct from Wabasto and that is meant to help with the carbon buildup as well. And again, if you're, if you're at altitude, uh, you've been camping at altitude for a couple of days, come back home, when you get it out, get home, get it in the garage, wherever, um, fire it up, let it run for a couple hours. Now, uh, one point to make here and another common question is you do not have to have the water pump turned on. You do not have to be flowing water to turn the Webasto on. It works just fine. Uh, it doesn't have to have water circulating to keep it cool or anything like that. So you can run it as long as you want to with the water pump turned off. Um, the, uh, another common uh, issue, and it's often or almost always correlates to altitude and or 
previous use at altitude is for the unit to smoke. So you might see some gray smoke. Uh, sometimes it gets really, really heavy. And again, that is carbon buildup. So you've got carbon built up on the burners and the unit is trying to burn that out and it's dirty and therefore it's gonna smoke. So, um, you know, again, there are, we're gonna include some methods for helping to clear some of that carbon out in addition to, you know, proper operation and stuff as well. And uh, we'll have that in part two of the video. It's all real simple stuff, nothing complicated. Um, that's really the only other time where we see anybody experience any issues with the Webasto is um, if the battery voltage on your trailer has dropped too low. So, and we're gonna get into a, a, a separate episode of Tech Tuesday where we discuss the battery management system itself and how voltage and percentages correlate and how they're important or, or uh, you know, which is more important. But if your voltage in your batteries gets low, your Webasto can turn itself off and uh, will throw a trouble code that uh, will indicate that it has lost voltage and or um, lost some other settings. So that is another thing that you can check is to make sure that you have proper voltage in your batteries. And if not, if you, you know, need to charge them a little bit. So um, again, altitude, let it run. Um, when you get home from altitude, let it run, clean out some of the carbon, work through that. And again, we'll show you how to do that a little bit later in the video. Um, that's really uh, kind of a general synopsis of how the system works, what it is. Again, just in summary, if you need to have it serviced, you're having problems, you're having questions, obviously you can call us, shoot us an email. Um, that's what we're here for. We are Wabasto um, Authorized Service Center. Um, there are a lot of things we can help you with over the phone or via email. There are other things that, that you will need to see a dealer for. Um, usually those are software based. The, but again, we're more than happy to help you or point you in the right direction. Um, we'll put Webasto's direct tech support line in this, uh, in the bar on the bottom, so you'll have the access to that number. Um, so if, you're, if we're unavailable or if you're looking for a dealer close to you, they're going to have the resources to make a recommendation uh, in that regard. Um, and then obviously if you have uh, an RV or uh, boat repair or heavy duty truck uh, repair place near you, more than likely you would find somebody there that's familiar with Webastos and how they operate and, and, and servicing. Um, always let it run for an hour and a half, two hours at a time. And uh, the 50-50 mix of antifreeze, if you um, for some reason need to fill or drain, diesel is just regular diesel um, straight out of the pump. No, uh, no special additives needed. All right, so that pretty much wraps up uh, the basic info overview on the diesel heating systems. Hope you found uh, some good information here. Obviously, if you have any questions or have any information needs, give us a call, shoot us an email. Um, we're more than happy to help and we'll help you to the best of our ability. Uh, part two, we're gonna get into some troubleshooting and a little bit of tech info, a little bit further in depth. Um, so please keep an eye out for that one to drop uh, next week and we will see you soon.